Hello guys, boys and girls, welcome to a new episode of uh, In Hindsight. This time around, we are going to be watching our set against Rival. Let's put down the volume a bit. Anyway, our set against Rival has been played quite uh, since, it's quite a bit since we played this set now, I think it's like two months ago, but we're gonna go back and watch that. If you're new to In Hindsight, it's the series where we go back in time and we try and like discuss what we're doing and uh, how, how we can improve and all that. Um, just as a team. So we're just watching back our SPL games, being a bit of a backseat gamers. We're gonna lean back a lot. Hopefully you guys can still hear me and I'll just enjoy this game. You can see we're gonna look for the, the speed buff invade right here. We have Bologna and Nasha, so we have a bunch of pressure right now at this one. So we're just kinda gonna run it down. But doing this right here, we kinda delayed our speed buff a lot. Uh, and, and this is really good, right? Because what's happening right here is the Twig actually can't farm. So I'm gonna go ahead. So PBM is going to do the same to us. Hopefully, we're going to get our speed. We do get our speed, so nothing really happens too bad for us. He Kenneth should not have went for the back camps. I guess he's going to try and kill PBM, but I don't really think he's going to ever kill him in that scenario. Uh, Twig is getting punched by Deathwalker. We're going to go for Mike. Actually, this could be a first part here. I hit the ring toss, and there you go. Get the first blood. That's pretty good. Just uh, rotate it down. The bad thing that's happening right now is actually no one is farming solo wave. So that's a bit of an issue. Uh, Pego is just being annoying. Twig has not got a single like farm point yet at all. So I think we are in a pretty good spot right now. Twig is getting really far behind. I'm getting the totem for the team. Uh, we should just make sure we get the wave still. Like, we don't want Deathwalker to run too far behind. Because he'll just have too much rough of a, of a rainy lane phase if that's the case. Uh, that focus is going to go to that pink buff as well. I think Bengo should have just gotten the red and then just TP it over. He's, he's, he's going to reset, he's going to TP over. So, I'm just kind of laning against Terra right here. <laughs> and that focus is going to keep slapping. I don't really see the point here that he keeps slapping. I think he's going to be fine though. Uh, so he's going to back out. The issue right now is that Deathwalker is super far behind. We kind of traded that for adapting being ahead of Twig, and I think Sir should have a lead and I should have a big lead as well. So it's very important for us right now that we make sure that Deathwalker gets some farm, that he kind of gets back into the game. You see Mike is not allowing him to back right here. So this is actually pretty bad for Deathwalker because he is still level 1. So I'm just going to be clearing solo right here, just having a good old time. Looking back here, I probably should have been the one chasing Trigger around and then Deathfogger should have went for the speed buff solo invade. I think that would have been better, just because Benko is going to have a disadvantage in this lane and he should be able to bully out Terra quite a bit, but that's definitely not going to be the case now. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully we can give Deathfogger some levels right here. He's still level 1, so he has his dash. Obviously that's a bit rough. Gonna try and get him level 2. There we go. Get Splot Gen. And I think now he's in a pretty good spot. We're just going to make sure he gets his blue buff and all that. Sucks we can't go for the follow-up speed invade. But I still think we've put ourselves in a pretty advantageous spot. If you can look at the XP right now. Uh, we have a lot of XP compared to them. I think it's only Deathwalker that's really behind. But seeing that he is solo, he should be able to farm that up quite easily. Um, so yeah, I need to really do something with the lead I have right now. Because I have a big lead. So I should probably go do or look for red buff invades with my team or something. Because in the 3v3 in mid right now, we're way stronger. We sacrificed some solo pressure for this. But I mean, I think it's going to end up working out right. Deathfog also went on this blessing. Going to take some poke right there. We can see it doesn't really work out too well for them. We really want to go for this red buff invade right here. But it seems we just didn't have the mid prior right there to do it. And they're actually going to end up securing the red buff. Come on, steal it. Oh, we got it. That's so good for us. That right, that's what we need to do, right? Because we have a level lead around mid. So we just need to try and get that back camp. So we need to try and get that red buff on timer. That's pretty much what we should be looking for. As you can see, I'm going straight for that back camp here as well. I'm like, all right, time to get the backs. Uh, Tara is going to go for her own blue. I think I'm going to get away with getting the back camps here. No, I'm going to go straight to blue, actually. Don't know if this is too good. I mean, hopefully I steal this. I doubt it, though. Nah, they get it right there. We take quite a bit of poke and we have to back out. I probably should have just went for the back camps and then backed out after getting those. I still haven't backed right here at all, by the way, so I need to back still. Um, but yeah, Kenneth is falling a bit behind right now. He's still ahead of the Raven, though, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can see Terra has a lot of farm, Zeros has a lead as well, so this start is very good for us all, but I definitely think we have perfected it more so now. When I look back, you can see a lot of little things we could have done differently. 
Um, that was the whole point of the series, right? Just look back. I should have been the one chasing Twig to uh, to Red and not vice versa. Then Deathwalker would have an easier time laning. Uh, and, and you can see he's, he's two levels behind right now. So it's not too favorable of a spot. Of course, he's below now, so he's not going to necessarily struggle too much into the tower. But there you go. He's still hitting level 5 now, so now he's going to be safe as well. Really important that we try and get all the neutral farm. Okay, that's mid camps, that's XP camps, all that. You can see we're trying to get the... Uh, yeah, there you go. We got both oracles as well. So this is really good. Our warding right now, I'd like to see our warding being a bit more aggressive. You can see we have normal wards in the mid lane and at the bottom left. We should try and ward their back camps. We should try and ward their red buff and, and just try and look for those inmates. It's definitely the favorable thing we can do right now. I'm level 5 now, that means that this red buff rage should be in our favor. You can see we're gonna go for it again now. Uh, yeah. 4 man rotation, this should be pretty easy to get that. This is this is exactly what we need to do, right? Like, we get the lead, PBM still level 4 because of the start. Uh, Twig was a bit, like, on the level as well, so we're gonna look for pink buff as well. If we get the pearl buff here as well, it's actually so, so good for us, even if we have to give up the mid camps. Uh, let's just hope Kenneth gets this here. Actually, I think Kenneth might die here. Oh, he get he gets Raven ult, but he has to go out. The bad thing right here is that Adapting wasted quite a bit of time going for that pill buff, so that was timey where he could have been farming, but... I mean, it's not the end of the world. As you guys can see, we still have mid prio. Kenneth can still farm the pill and the red buff, so he's still in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna look for the back camps right here. Just gonna wait for them to spawn. Oh, I think I realized they spawn now. Uh, actually, Twig is going to come into me. I know he has no ult, so I'm going to ult him here. Hoping that the uh, Zeros can uh, follow up, but sadly he can't really. Uh, because of the uh, their puck. I think that's alright though. We force our chip ult. That's what happens. Maybe one thing Zeros could have done is he could have like jumped over the wall to the mid camp and then tried to ult through the wall. That would have been sick, but... I don't know. I think it's alright how Zeros played that. He just kind of has to back out. This is not good if he's going to take a spell for us killing Twig at all. You can see I'm just trying to be in as annoying as possible to Trick right here. Just trying to stop his back. Being a real cook is how we gotta play this. Speed spawns relatively soon. I think we're looking for the speed buff anyway. This could be a bit risky though, because the puck has ult and I don't actually have ult right now. So yeah, we're gonna call it off and I think wisely so. I don't think that's a favorable invade for us at all. Uh, well. There you go. Anyway, my build wise, I go horrific. Horrific is more so just to get the pressure at level one. I don't think that will. I mean, we look. We're looking for the level one cheese kill, right? So I think it's all right that we do that and we look for it. But yeah, final case gonna punch down Defog a bit right here. So this is pretty rough right now for Benko because uh, final case actually just has the pressure. Hopefully he can get this totem right here. No. Oh, he got a totem. That's very nice. And look at how much he's healing right here, uh, which is filth path. He's healing so much up. That's kind of crazy, actually, how much better Deathfogger healed there. So even though Deathfogger is like at a disadvantage right now, he's actually not doing too bad for lane. But it would have been way better if he had a lead. So it's, it's what I think. But we managed to play around it pretty well. And and what was a 1,000 gold lead, we have managed to grow that into almost a 2,000 gold lead. Next objective. I don't know, I'm not really sure, like, how, what's our win condition this game? Our win condition is obviously getting the early lead. I think we can uh, pull objectives and try and bait them into it. They definitely have a super strong team comp rival, like Terra, Solo, does a lot of work. They have, uh, they have their Puk, I think they might have won this draft a bit, but how we, how we play this is we want to try and bait them into tiny corridors and then collapse on them there, where that we want to try and split them up, right? Like, we can't really ever take a 5 on 5 just full-on team fight, I think. Because Sheba old, Apok old, Terra old, they're all just going to be too big impacts. So we got to try and find a pick, try and burst someone, whether that's a frontliner, whether that's going to be diving someone. I, we don't want to take the big AoE fights, so... Yeah, I think our 3v3 in mid is still in our favor. Like, Nasha, Rage, and Susano should have enough burst damage to burst someone. Uh, whereas I think a Puk, Ravana and Five Nizzle has quite a bit of damage, as you guys can see it right here, but it's just not quite enough to get the, the instant kill off it. I'm gonna go Phoebs, I think, and PBM is going for Soft. I think it's fine that PBM is going for Soft. He like he needs some Fizz Prod stat so he can start playing up. We're getting mid camps and cooldowns, so that's really good for us. And just in a, in a, we're just coasting. 
this is the the coasting stream for rival the win condition right now definitely is to try and rotate fine okay or he has that lead right now and if they can try and rotate him over and and punish us or like for their putting their fogger behind that's how they want to play it maybe they want to try and do a grouping bait us into gold theory uh, try and blow someone up they can definitely they can definitely do that if they're all five there uh Arkles can have a bit of damage as well but luckily for us world actually has a lead so that's gonna be pretty big one thing our comp does really well is we can kind of pull objectives for free and this is you have to remember this is when the uh, efd and and all that was still a thing fd pre-nerf so their fogger can kind of pull it with vote and their fogger won't really take any damage because the way he's itemizing and he's going to be scourging it right so he's not going to take too much damage so that's what we should be doing i think we're going to wait for exe i'm actually going to go shield, shield of regrowth not sure if i'm the biggest fan of that i'm pretty confused how am i going to itemize after this my only issue with like going really go first usually is that like I don't know. I feel like they have so much lockdown. I guess it's gonna be easy to me to juke the hammer and stuff if I have regrowth But yeah. I don't know We'll see I, I guess I should go spirit rope or something off this That's why I like thief so much because you're so diverse in what you can build after that Whereas if you build thief second or something, it's not the the best ever Tarot to tour for the mid camps. This is what probably what you're gonna see a lot more now is that final case gonna try and show up for these mid camps. Uh, but again, we're just trying to be around neutral farm. You can see we've just almost established a, a, a 2.5k gold lead for just getting those neutral farms uh, right now. So if they don't want to fight us, you know, we can just keep taking neutral farm. If we don't want to invade, we can keep taking neutral farm and, and we're in a good spot. Pretty happy I didn't hit that on PBM right there. Pretty sure that would have ended up very badly for me. But we're gonna pull gold right here, just kind of test the water, see if they're gonna go in. I think we're just gonna go for it right here. Only Mike can seal this, but we're gonna get it. Now we just have to get out. I don't even think I have to hold out here. Can just get out with regrowth. There you go. That's just us utilizing the Jingwei mobility, kind of getting the mid prior. And whenever I, you hear me talk about pressure, mid prior, mid prior basically means that you push the wave before they do. And that usually comes from pressure. If you have a scarier 3v3 and enemy team knows they don't really want to fight into it, then you can usually play far up in the lane and clear the wave faster. And then you have mid prior because you can rotate out to mid camps or to a gold theory or to your back camps before the enemy team can. And that's why like, I think mid prior is really important right now because most games are won around these neutral buff camps. Invades is not the biggest thing anymore. Um, not like not as of this uh, right here, uh, as, at, at least compared to like season five, right? In season five, you just see people chain invading. I think it's a bit harder right now with the, with the changes. Obviously, the solo lane is more incentivized to stay in solo and all that. So news farm is definitely better. That was cool, but I cannot just slash in. Okay, I'm actually gonna go Onis. I guess that's the second best option. My only issue is that I'm gonna be super squishy to Shibalonki. I guess I'm trying to rely a bit on my movement speed. Uh, but yeah. I think we get both mids right there again, so it's really good. We got the gold, we have a 4k lead right now. Again, we don't really need to do anything for a bit. I, I definitely think we have a timing where we want to win this game. Like, we don't want this to be like a 40 minute l game. But I think we can wait. If we if we can't do this Pyromancer, Vote wants to push up a wave. He can fire out the Pyro, we can do that. If that's not the case, if we can't wait for that, what should happen is we should just wait for the Oni Fury and rotate that for go over the, the other way. And once you get Oni Fury, it really creates so much map play for you. And I think what we should do is like we should go for right, go right and try and go for Pyromancer, Fire, or Right Tower. The, the worst thing you can do after getting an Oni Fury, if Fire Giant and Pyromancer is up, is like to go and push left. In this scenario, right? Like you don't want to push Gold Fury side. You wanna you wanna be pushing with close to fire giant so you're either gonna want to siege schmidt or you're gonna want to siege solo uh, or you can go for like one of the two objectives but it's very important when you get that only theory that you try and force something because you don't have to do it you just have to establish presence around it and that means the whole enemy team is going to want to be around it and if that's the case you can just get a free right here we, we rotate vote over i should probably just ult fine okay right here yeah so you see i'm gonna ult fine okay so we get the pyromancer and we should just pretty much get out after this uh, so yeah, we just step, we get the pyro. Mielding, uh, mielding fine right there just means that he can't come in and we get the pyromancer for free. This is what I talked about, Vote pushed in the wave, he flew over. Uh, and that's just what Jing does, right? Like you have way more mobility in a sense. I'm gonna block the hammer right there, just make sure nothing happens. Next up is Oni. Oni, Fury, 
next objective. I don't think Firebolt Fire is gonna be good for us. If we lose Fire, we're just gonna lose the game. That's a big throw. Um, I'm gonna get Oni, Oni Hunter Scarf. There's too many Oni things in the game right now. And Sprint. I think Sprint for the mobility against them, I guess. Like the mobility to kind of like run around a bit. Maybe she would have been better, but they actually do have quite a bit of slows that we, that we need to be worried about. Sorry. I don't know, I'm just like uh, chronically uh, sick. Not really, but... <laughs> If if I if I, I feel like if I speak for too long for like fifteen minutes now, without really taking a break or like drinking water or something, I just get like super stuffed up. Anyway, we're gonna be chilling in med. Just waiting for only Fury right now. Like, there's no reason for us to do anything, cause that's just kind of playing to a disadvantage. And what I mean is, if we're gonna siege, they're gonna have that tower, which is an extra factor we have to like we have to factor that in um when, when searching or something so it's not the best thing ever fire giant obviously is going to do a bunch of damage to us so we just want to wait for only wait for death walker to return the war if we lose only it's not the end of the world whereas if we lose fire it's really fucking bad uh same if you lose a fight on the tower it's usually pretty bad because then the enemy team can go and do one of the objectives after that uh, whereas like losing the only free fight Worst case, I guess they DSI us and they get Fire Giant, but I think if we ever can lose the Sony Fury fight, we will at least have a few kills. I don't think they're ever gonna win a 5 0 fight right now with us being up by 5k gold. Um, for, okay, it's actually only 4.5k, they've been doing pretty well farming. But you see, only Fury spawning right now. We're gonna want that Foggy to rotate over. He has Shoguns as well. He's just going for like a full attack speed build, dude. I respect it. Pretty good timing right now because PVM really wants to back for a second relic as well. Uh, so we, we're gonna try and rotate the Forgo soon and, and uh, we should just be doing this. We have Poison Star on board as well. Don't know why he built Poison Star. Don't think that's very good at all. But we should be looking for this. I think Vote's gonna back, get a Sentry Ward. We really need Ward's around right here. I'm just standing still, kind of critting PVM a bit. <laughs> That's how you have to juke Fafnir, you just run around and circles around him. They could look for this only right here, because we're not really in a position. Can it back? So we're gonna, they're gonna try and pull it, but luckily Ward is around. They have really good wards around this rival. We have like shit wards, we have the ward on it. Rival doesn't even have a ward on it. This is even a really bad ward, because if they place a ward inside gold, they can still see it. So we should ward it more towards the gold fury. But their wards right here is really annoying. They can always see it before we pull it, which is the main thing. Um, they're gonna see their focus rotation as well. We should literally just get some more sentries and then try and group around there. The, the risky thing right now is though, if you, if you have too many people back, you can kind of be in a bad spot. This right here is gonna be a super good timing though. I think we can definitely go for this. Shiba ult. So we're gonna try and wait out the ship ult. And I think after that, we can uh, pull it again. So now ship ult is down. We're just gonna gamble the gold fury. Nine out of ten times we're gonna get that, so I think it's fine taking that risk. After this, we're gonna take the fight. You can see Mike is gonna be in trouble. Death Ogre is slapping Panda in the back as well, right here. So we're gonna have to try and help Death. He does kill Panda for it, so I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm gonna get the old and fine okay here. See if we can kill him. I do have a Rific. So we're gonna. Oh, I kill. Very nice. So we get all those kills. Ah, it's not too bad. We get the only, we get the, the free for one trade out, and I think we can just push mid tower here. Should be the call. We could, we could go tier two, but I think the right decision would be to go for the tier one tower, and then off that we can try and go, uh, go for like uh, pyro. Ward's gonna pressure. Fine, okay here. They might get the kill on fine. Okay, they're gonna end up killing fine. Okay, so that's really good. I think we're gonna get the pick on twig as well right here. He's gonna get the return pick though, which ain't. Oh, that's a nice blink. Damn, that was really good by Trick. That's a heads up play. He kills Kenneth. That kind of means that we can't do too much. Although one big thing right now is only waves are already pushing in, so we should just go straight to this Pyromancer and then try and do it because they're gonna lose tier one and left. We have only waves pushing in right. 
Um, so we want to pressure on the other side of the map. Don't know why we're prioritizing red buff right now. I think it should be pretty clear that they need to rotate someone to left. So I think it's bad. I'm also doing the back camp. Who knows why? We should literally just be going for Pyromancer right now. Um, but I guess, I don't know. Hopefully we're still going to get this. Because this is pretty bad. Rival again has really good wards. You see that they have that ward, like kind of awkward ward, like in behind. That's one thing they do really well is like uh, the ward placement is definitely good. So we're going to try and, Mike's going to, I guess, try and dash in here again. See what he can do. Nope, not this time. He did die last time when he did it. So we're like, all right, maybe this time it's not a good idea. Anyway, we're going to pull FG now. This might be a bit greedy though. Like This is what I mean, by the way. Deathwalker is not taking any damage from tanking this fire right here. Oh, this is really bad for Vote. Vote got stunned on the fire giant. He almost dies. Jesus Christ. That was a really heads up play by fine. Just stunning world right there. If the, if Vote would have died, that would have been rough. Hmm. I have sovereignty, so I'm in a good spot. You see all our relics are kind of coming back up now. I think Vote has no relics either. Ken is looking for the 1v1 against Twig. He wants some revenge. He's going to get the both oracles as well. I guess Ravana is going to win this 1v1 because he has the Void Blade and the Stone Cut thing. So in the heads up 1v1, uh, it should go in Raven's favor. Oh, I have 0 59.94 FPS on my camera. Hell yeah, dude. 1080p. That's what you want. The 60 FPS gameplay. It's honestly just what uh, what it brings. That Fogger is going to be chilling right here. He's going to try and punch Vine a bit in the face. Bang. Didn't really work out too well, but it is what it is. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Punching through. We should really look to siege this fire giant now, I think. Like, just get good water around here. You can see Rival has... Really good normal wards. This is one thing we need to pick up on the way that they are warding. We could also just decide to go for siege. Ooh, a puck might be a bit out of position in mid right now. Death Fog is definitely going to be fine fighting them here. I think, yeah. He's going to pop Ankh. Uh, a bit of a weird exchange by Benko right there. This is like a relic force, and that also means that we're not in too good of a spot when it comes to. Um, when it comes to this fight, I'm gonna look for Twig right here. Just try and bait out everything. Took a bit of poke right there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Gonna heal up a bit here. There you go. So we're gonna look for this. This is a bit bad now though, because I'm poked and Menko had to back right and expend his TP, so we don't have Ankh either into Terra. It's not, not the best thing in the world. You see, I'm just trying to heal up right here, getting some stacks onto my passive. Yeah, we should just dive Panda. I think that's what you're going to see as well happen, most likely. And then Vold is going to try and, I guess, like, kill Fine okay with the Death Fogger or something, but... Let's see. Let's see how it's going to play out, nonetheless. I can't remember how it plays out. Like, how we should play it is we should try and kill this up hook and then Chiblonky after. If you can bait a few ults before anything, that's going to help a lot. I'm healing up right now with Regrowth. Am I too? So it's not too bad. Gold spawning soon. I think Ken is gonna go and clear some buffs. I guess he's farming right now for like an item, maybe getting full trance, something like that. I need to be a bit careful here. Do get hit by the stun, but I'm pretty fine. Just gonna be zooming around. Ken is pushing in left. Doing gold right here. So we're soloing gold right now. This is good. But I really want us to try and do this fire giant before 25 minutes, otherwise you're just putting yourself at a pretty big disadvantage, which I don't think is favorable at all to us right now, so... Build-wise, we have Deathbringer and Jing right now, so we do have quite a bit of fire giant DPS. Benko can tank it up, we have the Shoguns as well, so we're in a good spot right now. We just need to start, like, warding this up. We have a 10k lead right now. I don't think we want to wait much longer, and I think this is going to be the grouping where we're going to try and end the game, and like, not end the game, but get at least the first fire giant and try and get us off that. Death Fogger's going to ult fire giant. We see Terra back, so I guess we're just going to decide to all end this right here. I'm going to go in on Arkel. We're just going to gamble it. Again, 9 out of 10 times we get that, so we might as well. I might take a spill here, though, to be fair, because I did go pretty deep right there. Oh, Shiro regrowth and sprint. Bam. There we go.
That's good. We get fire now. I think we can, we know now we can push kind of instant. We did use a lot of ults, but their main team fights ult beside Terra ult are down. So it's not the end of the world. Because if they don't have a puck ult, that just makes him so much worse in this fight right here. If they're going to try and defend this, this might be a bit of a mistake in my mind at least. Vault is going to take a lot of damage right here. Uh, Defogger might die. Defogger is actually going to get locked down right there and die. That's surprising. I guess Kennen wasn't around to disrupt the back line. They're going to chase down here. We have to use our ult to get out. Zeros might have to beat here as well. Uh, yeah. They're going to counter siege mid right here. I think we can give tier 2 though. We don't have to defend it because Defogger is going to... Or Kennen is going to be pushing left here. So it's not the end of the world. So they get one tier one and one of our fire giants, they'll probably get pyro as well. I think we could even look for a pyro defense here if we want to. Looks like we want to, but I think they're going to blow it up before we get there. Yeah, they're going to get it. Death Ogre might have went a bit too deep, I guess, without assault. He's not too tanky with the way he's building either. So, it's so unlucky, dude. I'm going to go for PBM right here. Just try and poke. As you can see, I'm just looking for ults right now. No, I'm relatively alone, but I'm just yuking around trying to see if I can find someone no trying to bait something lol half top player damage let's go dude so that's how that's how we do it I'm gonna lose that real fast to zeros and vote in a second it's classic zeros gameplay lowest damage but He's gonna farm some damage soon. Gonna try and go in right here. Gonna take a fit bit of poke, but it's not the end of the world. There you go. Gonna heal it up. Left girl, we need to be a bit careful of that, I guess. It's like a big thing. Looking for the siege right here. I should try and get the an ult if I can. You can see I'm playing super far up looking for sashes and ults. Mm. We should probably split up right now. The bad thing though is that I think Twig actually wins this, the 1v1 versus adapting. Uh, but Kenneth's gonna go mid now, see how this is gonna pan out. I think Kenneth's like talking right now saying, chill guys, I'm clearing mid. Uh, they're gonna have to send someone over to defend then. We can do something after that. Twig is gonna be mid right here. Maybe Kenneth's gonna look for a play onto him. We'll see. We're kinda going in on the other side of the map. Take a bunch of damage right there. That's all the ults popped, so we should just reset right now. We should just try and get out. There you go. So that's all the ults popped right now. Actually not. I guess... Well, yeah, Panda still has his ult, so it's gonna make it a bit tricky. But they hold. We're just gonna decide to back off. I think that was kind of a shot. Maybe we should have just been more patient and waited for Kedit. Hmm... I don't know. Seems like we took a bit too much damage right there. It's gonna be hard now. We should try and get primal and then get the uh, fire and, and hopefully we can end the game with the next fire push. I think kind of what went wrong is that they got the engage on us. It needs to be the opposite way around. If you guys saw that they were the ones chasing us down the lane, it needs to be the opposite way. We need to be the ones chasing them down. Otherwise these team fights are gonna be too hard for us. Panda is gonna do quite a bit of damage. He has a bunch of pens, so he's gonna look to, to do a lot of a scamage with that. We'll see though. We'll see how it's gonna pan out. Uh, primal spawning now. Get primal. It's not the biggest thing ever. Uh, obviously this is pre-primal buff. I think primal's in a really good spot right now. But seven percent more damage is something, right? It's gonna make it a bit easier to do this EFG. I guess we're gonna get a EFG now as well, which is gonna make the fight more favorable in an in an extent. So hopefully we can uh, we can go for that. Let's see here. Bam, 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 bam. Gonna look for fire giant. The fire giant. We need good wards. Everyone needs to buy wards. I'm the only one without wards. Uh, whoops. <laughs> I guess I bought full Lono, so I was like, shit, guys, I can't afford wards. Got my upgraded terrific now. Really big thing if you build terrific, you wanna try and upgrade it as early as possible. Without like delaying your build if you can. So like say you have 500 gold spare on one of your backs, you might as well upgrade your Rific because that 20% damage decrease is really good. So our relics right now, like 
Ooh, we forced Drake right out right here. This is really good. I'm trying to go in off this, but we can pull fire off this. And oh yeah, we've been pulling fire the whole time, so we're just gonna do this. And they're gonna have to back out. So good play by Kenneth. I guess Kenneth definitely wins this one v one now. He's gonna have Titan Spain. He's gonna be doing quite a bit more damage. I'm just kind of running it down here. Hell yeah, uh, that thing did more damage now. I have Lotus now. I'm pretty unkillable. I can play so far up, which is the good thing right now. Pop my Horrific. I'm going to take relatively little damage. I can put myself in a spot right here where I'm just going to be completely annoying. Oh, top damage again. Hell yeah, dude. 400 damage. That's how we do it. <laughs> Gonna look for the fight right here. I, I just need to go on the panda cat. You can see me pop my two and try and make my way in here. I'm not really taking damage, and so now I'm in a really good spot because now I'm kind of behind, and that means that their backline can't really follow up if they go in like that. So that's really good for us. If I can put myself in a spot where panda and Argyle constantly has to be worried about playing up, that's the best spot I can be in because then they can't really follow up. I don't think there's many scenarios right now where I die. Can almost get the 1v1 on Twig in mid. Uh, and we're gonna go in. You can see what I'm doing right now, right? Like, they wanna go in, but look, Panda can't really do anything. Arkel is free casting a bit, but now I'm in a spot where I'm behind. I'm gonna get Panda into the air. I'm gonna ask for some follow up. Bam, he's gonna die. Death Focus in Trouble. This could be Trouble Force. Terra ult gets popped. We just do so much damage. I'm gonna try and make sure I survive Twig right here. And I'm gonna get out. There you go. That should be game. What a fight. Kenny comes in with the flank. Instant scamash. NT from fine, okay. But that should be game. That's pretty good. I think we could have done fire a lot earlier. I think what we need to learn from this game is like definitely get better warding. And then we gotta learn how to play the fights a bit better. Dude, I die in the end. I I do that so often where we like ending the game. I'm like, fuck it, dude. I'm just gonna die. There's no point. <laughs> I did it recently as well. I just put my hands off the keyboard. I was playing Fafnir, Evolved Dragon. No one was spawned from any team. And just decided to kill myself to the Titan. It's like, why not? You know. All right, let's take a look at the damage numbers. I see here. Here's the builds. Um, Lonos. This is just a very overall tanky build. One thing that maybe could have been like reasonable is like Phoebe's here instead, and then that meant we maybe didn't need Lonos. I do think that regrowth did quite a bit for us in that game, though. So maybe it's not the end of the world. Um, Shell potentially could also have been a really good pickup. Uh, definitely bad by them that they did not get a sprint against our horrific. That means horrific is gonna be doing so much work. There wasn't even a wing blade on here, so that means the carries probably have to beat the horrific slow if they want to get out, uh, which which just kind of puts them in a bad spot. Item wise, uh, or not da damage wise, you can see do more damage than both my carries. Although Kenneth did like 5k damage in the last fight. What a beast. Mitigated quite a bit as well. I think Deathfogger must have... Okay, yeah. So I was just constantly running around, trying to be annoying as fuck. Didn't place too many wars, though. That's one thing to improve on. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed episode 7 of In Hindsight. If you did, please make sure to leave a follow. No, it's not follow on the YouTube. It's a subscription. There you go. Like, comment, and uh, press the bell. And also next time, everyone, peace out. No, I've let it go.